Hello everyone, it's me again, Mr. Max. Of course, you're probably not that surprised to run into me here because you are on or in Mr. Max's neighborhood. That's where you go to find the videos. I've been uh, making a new one, uh, one or two every day lately because I want you to have a lot of them. There are so many wonderful stories and uh, I'm trying to share as many as I can. I have a really good camera now and really good, makes the voice sound right too. So this one I'm going to share with you right now. It's called Isabella's Ribbons. Look at that girl in a tree with a basket and there's ribbons all over the tree. It makes you wonder how did it get like that? But that's why we read the story. We'll find out. That's why they put a picture on the cover of the book that makes you want to read the story to find out what how it got like that. And this story is by a lady named Satomi Ichikawa, who is a very good writer. She also wrote a book called Nora's Stars that I have a video of here, and it's one of my favorite stories. Isabella's Ribbons. <clears throat> I'm going to read some of these pages, and then I'll show you the picture. First, I'll show you this picture. Show some girls in a black and white picture. All the other pictures in the book are bright colored pictures. There's an island in the ocean where the sun shines all year long. Flowers bloom in bright colors. Sweet fruits hang from the trees. And all the little girls wear ribbons in their hair. Here is one of their stories. You know what I can do? I'll do this just for reading to you, so you can see the picture the whole time. Once there was a little girl who lived on an island. Her name was Isabella. She loved ribbons of every color and wore them wherever she went. Isabella had never been seen without a ribbon. Hello, ribbon lady, people would wave their hands and say. Every day, Isabella tied a ribbon in her hair and went to play outside. Look at that closet full of colorful clothes, too, and a pretty dress she's wearing. Isabella's favorite game was hide-and-seek. How she loved to play that game with her dog, Samantha. Can you see where she's hiding there? Let me take a look. I'm not sure I can find her. Anyway, she hid among the pink hibiscus flowers so well that even Samantha could not find her. And a dog has a very good sense of smell, so she must be really hiding well. Sometimes she played with her neighbor Patria in the banana tree. Isn't that a beautiful picture of a great big banana grove of banana trees? And they got the ripe bananas on them too, it looks like. Hello, ribbon lady, where are you? Patria would call, but she could not find Isabella. I can see a little bit of Isabella's face there. Had to look really hard for it. Sometimes Isabella played with her grandma. I will find you, my little Isabella. Grandma would sing. Grandma would search and search the blooming red flamboyant tree. But she could not find Isabel. Let's, oh, look at we find We can find her better than Grandma can. <laughs> Isabella loved playing hide-and-seek. But one day nobody wanted to play with Isabel. Grandma had friends uh, visiting. Patria was out shopping. And even her dog Samantha had a friend over to play with. Isabella had no friends to play with her, so she took a basket full of ribbons and she went to play alone. Let's see. Here she, there she is. That's right. She's going over to that tree. Can you tell what kind of fruits those are on the tree? The story will tell us. The book will tell us in a minute. Inside the mango tree, the thick leaves made a fine hiding place. But how could she play hide-and-seek alone? Playing, playing her favorite game wasn't any fun today. 
going to do it this way again. Suddenly, somebody squawked at her. It was a parrot who landed in the tree to get a mango to eat. Delighted, Isabella said. Hello, parrot, would you play hide and seek with me? I'll hide first. And Isabella waved the parrot away. Quickly, she tied her ribbons all over the tree, it became a ribbon tree, <laughs> and she hid among them. That's what we saw on the front. Now we know how it got that way. Never would the parrot find her. Isabella held her breath and waited, and waited some more, but the parrot did not come back. Inside the tree, it seemed cooler and quieter, like being underneath the sea. I knew when I was little, it makes me think of a place where I used to hide when I was little outside of our house. It was so, you'd be so hidden in the bushes, no, people would walk by on the sidewalk. Nobody would know I was there and I could, I could spy on them <laughs> and they would never know. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. My friends and I would, would uh, sit there together sometimes and spy on grown-ups who walked by. All at once, Isabella found herself in that deep sea. And the ribbons were fish of every color. Isabella was a fish too, of course. This is her imagination. She's imagining that the colorful ribbons have turned into colorful fish. Together, she and the fish swam into the middle of the sea. They swam along reefs of coral and past hidden islands. They swam and swam, and then Isabella saw a bright light up ahead. Let's swim to the sunlight, she said, and she and the fish swam toward the sunlight together. Isabella looked through the sunlight. See, the, they're in that tree, and then you can see outside of the tree. There's one little hole where you can see through, and you're, you can see beyond the tree. Isabella looked through into the sunlight and saw many children playing. How she wished she and her friends, the fish, could swim to those children. She wanted to share her fish. Swim, fish, she said to them. Swim! When the, now watch what happens now. When the children looked up, they stopped playing. What they saw when they looked up were ribbons of every color flying out of the mango tree. Delighted, the children chased the ribbons and grabbed at them and caught them. Finally, they discovered Isabella hiding in the mango tree. Can you see her in the tree here? I'm not sure. Now, Isabella, see, she made so many friends that day by doing that. Now, Isabella has many friends to play with, and they all love ribbons as much as Isabella. But now there are so many ribbons that on some days, Patria still cannot find her ribbon lady. We can, there's Isabella, but everybody has a ribbon, so she has to really look carefully, Patria does to see which one is Isabella. As for Isabella, she loves her ribbons more than ever. And that's the end of the story of a girl, about a girl who lives on a tropical island somewhere that seems like a very beautiful place to live. Thank you for listening. I'll be back a little later with another book. Take care.